Russia meets the grim test. Despite repeated attacks by crushing panzer units, pushing on desperately toward the Caucasus and into the streets of Stalingrad, Marshal Semyon Timoshenko's relentless armies take a terrific toll of the enemy and upset his invasion timetable. The Russians meet the Nazis in close and often hand-to-hand -hand fighting. A German sniper is picked off by a Soviet sharpshooter. Another Nazi tries to surrender, but too late. Britain's Prime Minister flies to Moscow. Eyes and ears the world over are focused on a conference of historic importance. Churchill meets Stalin behind the walled fortress of the Kremlin. Rio de Janeiro, nerve center of the largest country in South America, is the scene of a history-making demonstration. All-out war is declared as a result of the ruthless Axis attacks on Brazilian ships and an appalling loss of lives. Brazil goes to war. Silk-like mists blanket a lifeless channel as a strong force of fearless Canadians accompanied by British, American and Free French breathlessly await daybreak in the grim job ahead. The job of invading the German-held French coast. Dieppe is their battle objective and the hardy Canadians and their allies have been training for months for the dangerous hour and pass. RAF and American bombers soften up inland German positions in a true coordination of land, sea and air hitting power. Down goes wave after wave of bombs, the din of battle in the air, on land and from the sea, reaches a terrific crescendo. For nine hours, the Canadians battled fiercely on Nazi-held and fortified soil. They leave the coast of France in flames. Their objective obtained, these battle-scarred heroes disembark for a well-earned rest. Filmed under fire, the ever-growing British and American air might rains destruction upon French-held ports and over the Reich itself. United Nations flyers maintain daylight raids with constantly increasing frequency. Enemy munition plants are sent skyward. Dock installations and rail centers are hit again and again. Air prelude to the Allied Second Front to come. Official United States Navy pictures of Japan's first great naval defeat. At mid-Pacific, Midway Island, American planes and warships strike a punishing surprise blow that the Japs will never forget. Their invasion plans are scuttled as the Yankees take a telling toll. Four Jap carriers sunk, 28 Jap battleships and cruisers sunk or put out of action, and more than 300 Jap planes destroyed. Enemy airmen try desperately to fight off the unexpected assault, but all in vain. A few escape our furious air and sea barrage. Most of them are destroyed. Six months after Pearl Harbor, and for three hot, sunlit days, the Battle of Midway rages. Here, a Jap surprise invasion meets with a counter-surprise by American forces. The concussion of bursting bombs is deafening as Jap planes drop their eggs of destruction, only to be met by a hail of hot steel. Steel made in the USA to destroy Japs. Heroic Marine gunners stick to their posts and let the enemy have it. Jap planes fall by the hundreds, fall like blazing torches. Flames consume the wreckage of other planes that fail to get through. The Red Cross heroically cares for the scorched and wounded. Midway's oil tanks explode, sending forth a curtain of dense smoke that casts a deep shadow over the battleground below. Smoke and burning oil tanks cloud the skies over Midway, 
as reveille sounds on the third day of the struggle. Amidst this scene of destruction and bravery, the Marines proudly raise the emblem of freedom, the flag of victory. Midway was ready. A momentous victory is 